wrong. And now the Bible is the answer. The questions are yours. I go to the Bible, God's holy word, to find answers. Again, good questions today, and let's get to them right now. Question number one, does God hear the prayers of the unsaved? Well, you are really asking if God answers positively to the prayers of the unsaved. Of course, God knows everything. There's nothing hid from the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So every prayer that's ever uttered by anybody is known to God. And if the request is for salvation, then of course we go to Romans chapter 10 verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that word whosoever includes everybody, everyone who will come to the cross. However, if your request is for healing or for a good crop this year on your fields, then other factors enter, not only for the saved, but also for the unsaved. You have to reckon in God's will. When we pray in God's will, he hears us, even as believers, and also our motives. James chapter 4, verse 3, talks about people asking for things to, quote unquote, consume it upon their own lusts, and God doesn't answer that kind of prayer for anybody. God knows the future, and sometimes he blesses people in anticipation of a future decision to follow him. Now question number two, will real Christians experience the tribulation? Well, Jesus said that in this world we shall have tribulation, but we shouldn't fear because he has overcome the world. Jesus said that they hated him before they hated us, and so we can expect to be hated by the ungodly. The question, however, is not about general tribulation, but about the great tribulation. When you read your Bible, you discover that there's a seven-year period, or at least a three-and-a-half-year period, of God's wrath, the time of God's wrath under the Antichrist. First Thessalonians 5, verse 9, says God has not appointed us unto wrath, that's talking to Christians, but to obtain salvation. And so if you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, you will discover that Christians will be raptured before the time of God's wrath on the earth. You have a right, of course, to ask how things could get any worse today uh, with persecution around the world. My son Jim taught students in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and some of them were on a death list because they were Christians. I understand that once every five minutes a Christian dies as a martyr in the world for his faith in Jesus Christ. Well, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the time of uh, God's wrath against the world, and uh, Christians will not uh, experience that. Now, question number three, can a backslider return and be fully pardoned? Well, the Bible answer to that is given in Luke chapter 15, where we read about the lost son and the lost coin and the lost sheep and all of them were returned and uh, found when the prodigal son said i have sinned i'm not worthy to be called a son i will arise and go to my father when he said that he was restored he was forgiven fully his father threw his arms around him in blessing yes yes Backsliders can come back. Jeremiah 3.14 says that God is married to the backslider. Malachi 3.17 is God's call to every backslider. Return unto me and I will return unto you. Hosea 14.4 is God's promise to heal our backslidings. 
Dear friend, if you have drifted away from God, I invite you to come back. He'll welcome you. Thank you so much for these good questions. I trust the answers have been a blessing. If you have a question you'd like me to use on the Bible as the answer, please write it out, send it to me. I'll get to your question on the air as quickly as I can. And when you write, all the address you need is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, and the code is R3C2H6. Let's listen now to Heidi and Rick singing, I Know That My Redeemer Liveth. 